hello model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral. And this week's build here is a Dodge 69 Coronet RT. And I always like the, the higher line fully optioned cars as you can tell. And uh, the Coronets, they're pretty rare and pretty hard to find. I, I searched these out and this is kind of an older build of mine. But for 1969, the Coronet RT, it was actually in its third year of production as just like the Plymouth GTX they had come out with uh, the Cornet RT in 67 and it didn't have a whole lot to compete against it was going after the the higher priced uh, GTO and some of those cars in that marketplace but in 68 Mopar came out with the budget lines the GTX had to compete against the Roadrunner which was running away success and sales so to counteract that Dodge came out with the Super B so the Super V being the lower cost version of the Coronet RT with the very similar options, although the 440 Magnum was not available in the Super V, much like the Roadrunner and uh, the 440 Super Commando as uh, Plymouth called it. The Hemi engine was available in both of them as well, but for 69 if you wanted the 440 in Dodge you had to get the Coronet RT. The 440 six-pack came out mid-year, but that was only for the Super B and the Roadrunner in special packaged cars. One thing that I think is kind of interesting with comparing the Plymouth Roadrunner and GTX story to the Dodge Cornet RT and Super B story, the Super B was the low-budget one, of course, but when it came in 1969, Dodge decided that no, you could not get a convertible Super B. But Plymouth, yes, you could get a convertible Roadrunner, so it muddied up the waters and the, blurred the line between the two even more. But Dodge stuck to their guns and said, there are no Super B convertibles. So even though Roadrunners were made in a convertible form, Super Bs were not. But in the Cornet RT line, if you wanted a convertible, you could get it. You can get it with the 440 as standard or option up to the Hemi. So uh, another thing that I think is kind of interesting for the Highline vehicle, it actually was available with the, the base steel wheels. Although very rare, most of them had the wheels and wheel covers, a couple of different options. But the Cornet RT was available with these wheels, which, you know, I put them on there and I, and I had to dress it up or, or dress it down. So I think they just look really sharp with them. But in 69, when uh, Dodge was... Uh, building these it had a little bit more in-house competition that uh, Plymouth didn't have in the form of the Charger RT they had multiple B bodies so Roadrunner was trying to compete with that um, which I'm sure is one of the reasons why the convertible was available in the Roadrunner but Dodge they just had the Cornet RT and the Charger and the Charger was just selling like crazy so Cornet RTs are even rarer because of that and they were just directly competing with each other even though they were both in the the scat pack marketing scheme of the cars here which is, has to do with the stripe on the back here they they added that as part of the the package so the the scat pack group came out in 68 and in 69 and they continued that for 70 so when it came to uh, the Coronet RT they're they're pretty rare and, and you don't really see them much and even in model form and scale form they're they're pretty hard to come by so this one, it's got a, a long story with me and it's got a lot of really good memories and it's one of the few early ones when I was um, getting back into the hobby and really starting to look around and expand. And it's actually an eBay purchase from the early days of eBay. So it's actually a resin body and it's a mini exotics resin body. But you know, I had found it on eBay and I had learned about eBay and in 2001 I became an eBay member and I was purchasing stuff. Now in the early days of eBay, much different than it is now. You were dealing directly with the buyer. They didn't have buy it now in the early days. They added that later. You were dealing directly. There was no PayPal. Everybody took money orders. There was, wasn't any cash. Very rarely did anybody take a personal check. Scams were prevalent and lost uh, checks or addresses and all kinds of goofy stuff because when when you won something or you had to wait for the seller you sent them your address and information calculated the shipping and you had to wait for a total and then it usually took a couple of days and then or they would guess and you would get the total and shipping 
and then you would have to mail a money order. And most of them accepted postal money orders or Western Union money orders. A lot of them wouldn't take personal checks or bank money orders because a lot of them could be faked. Which, you know, with my credit union, I remember money orders were 50 cents. And if they would accept it, I went that way. Otherwise, it was Western Union or post office. I remember Western Union was a dollar. I think the post office was like a dollar and a quarter or whatever it was. But I had to go there, get it printed, and then I'd mail it off. Um, drop it off in a blue mailbox or I'd go to Fry's and drop it off there because that's where Western Union was. And it took a while. You had to wait three or four days for them to get the payment. Then they would box it up and ship it. So generally, if you got it fast, it was two, maybe three weeks. And if you had a seller that was kind of slow, then um, you had to wait a little bit. But that was, you know, the early days where on eBay, there wasn't a whole lot of model kits, but there, you know, it was an easy place to find vintage or out of production kits. Uh, other websites you could find them, or you'd be on forums and ask or trade and work deals. But eBay became an easy place to do it. And at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of buyers for that stuff. So those, um, you know, when they did pop up, you didn't get a whole lot. But when they did pop up, you didn't have a whole lot of competition either. So even vintage kits, I remember buying a MPC 71 Challenger for 80 bucks, unbuilt, molded in green. And I thought that was really cool. And I just couldn't, couldn't get myself to build it. And I watched them start selling for um, 125 to 150 bucks and I turned around and sold it. It's one of those things that I shouldn't have done, but I did because I started to look at the value and think this thing's worth too much money. I need to sell it. So I ended up selling it and now I'm kind of veering off and bought a model house kit for $69 and built that instead. And then later on, I ended up buying a, a, another unbuilt, not unbuilt, rebuilder for like 90 bucks. And after chroming, the missing parts or the miscellaneous parts it cost a bit more that way but anyway that was just me thinking i was being smart but didn't work out that way but when it comes to this one it kind of took a, a life of its own on ebay i had purchased a mini exotics kit and i don't remember what i paid but it was incomplete and i didn't realize it at the time because i really didn't know too much about older mini exotic kits that weren't available anymore. I had purchased a, a couple that were available, but the older ones, they weren't available. And I don't remember paying more than 40 bucks, but it was missing parts. And I've seen some of the kits since then where it didn't have this hood. The mini exotic kits had the dual scooped hood and the flat, you know, didn't have this bulge. It was a Ram charger hood. And they had interiors usually. Some kits didn't, but uh, I've seen some with, mine was pretty much a body grill and bumpers and that was pretty much it it was missing some stuff and I remember from model Haas I had to buy the hood the seats the console top um, and I believe the taillight lens I'm really not 100% sure anymore because I built this back in 2004 and then you know to get an idea these these wheels that are on here I got those from arrowhead aluminum but when I was building this I was kit bashing it and the recommended donor was the 69 GTX from AMT and I didn't have one of those but I did have a 68 Roadrunner so I used that uh, entire chassis under this and kit bashed that under there but the only real issue with that particular one is it had the Hemi engine in it and I wanted to put uh, 440 in it so instead of buying a whole other kit I bought a resin engine from uh, Ross Gibson and I bought that engine and here's where it kind of takes a, a life of its own. At the time, I was on Scale Auto Forum, and I was starting to really share my builds, not just my completed ones, but I was sharing my projects. And I was posting this one up, and I've got a lot of photos of this. So I'll share some of them on here, but stay till the end, and I'll put them all on there. So there'll be a lot of photos at the end, and you'll see them all on full screen. I was building this car. And I was showing progress pics and I was showing the engine and my mom had always taught me. She was very into the internet and uh, online and I, I can go into stories of that. But her being 30 years older than me, I was a little bit later in, in her life. And being in, in high school in the 90s, she was very involved in the Commodore 64 Club and gaming online. I remember playing Trade Wars, a BBS game, if you know what that is. 
um, doing that. So she was very involved, but for somebody in their 50s online, that was unusual. But she would tell me things like, be careful what you post online. It's the bathroom wall of the world. I, I remember that. If you post it, you can't take it back. There's really no point in saying anything negative. You know, just, you know, you know, you, you, you reap what you sow kind of stuff. And she would, she would tell me those things and we would talk about that kind of stuff. And that was just one of the, the many lessons that we went over. But in, in knowing that and being online and being raised that you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to it. Well, much is the same with modeling. You, you get what you start with, you know, whether you complain about it or not, and then you work your way around it. Well, this one being incomplete, one of the things I was really looking for was the interior tub. And I had bought the seats from Model Haas, the console from Model Haas. I had purchased a resin 68 Coronet RT convertible, and it came with two dashes. So I ended up with the, a dash that I was missing when I found this kit. And then I used the AMT steering wheel on it, and I also was certain, you know, used the AMT glass because that fit really well. But I was searching for an interior tub and vintage parts and pieces didn't really pop up on eBay too often. But eventually when the, a tub did turn up, um, I was able to buy it. That was the last piece I needed. But when I was sharing this stuff online and on the forum and going through the process, it took a life of its own. I, I had a lot of comments, a lot of uh, um, support from everybody as I was building this. And uh, this, by the way, this decal is a Fred Katie decal. But it, it took on a life of its own, and everybody can see the progress and the comments, and which was all great. It was one of the first ones that I was doing online that was a full-on build like this, and it really took off. Well, it kind of sparked something uh, interesting. One of my life lessons that come to reap to sow was Ross Gibson had actually seen, um, or somebody told him about it. I don't quite remember, but my nice words about using his engine and I remember posting on there that you know if you ever built one of his engines you've got to sand some of the flash off and make all the uh, in the intake and the heads and all stuff fit and there's a little bit of extra material and you got to sand it all off but it goes together pretty well and once I had done that I dropped it into the chassis and it fit this chassis like like it was meant for it and I made some comments about how easy it was to put this in there didn't really have to splice the drive shaft uh, didn't really have to do any work. It just went right in there. And when I was doing it, I also wired the distributor and did the heater hoses. And it was one of the first I did that way. Although it's not quite my best work. Um, I could could do better with it. But, you know, the heater hoses are just a little too high and floating. But um, it was very, very well, you know, one of my, my best work at the time, really. And one probably one of the hardest builds that I built at the time too because I had to collect all those parts and change a few things but we had struck up a friendship he had emailed me and it was back in the days when you can you know request you didn't instant message or text you made a comment on there and it was sent to your email and we had gotten in touch with each other that way so it was pretty cool it was one of my first times I have ever gotten involved with the resin caster and we got to talk in Mopars and engines and some of the stuff and projects and him being a modeler, like most resin casters, he had his own projects also, and sometimes made parts that he didn't really sell. So I'll kind of show you a, a sneak peek at one of his projects, and you know I'd like to get back to it. But here, here is some of his parts, and I didn't quite finish this. Um, I got to get back to it. But he had cast this front nose piece and the hood, and the tail panel piece that's just kind of sitting here. To convert the commonly available 69 into a 68 and the taillights were cast in I actually drilled them out squared them out and it was putting model house taillights in but he had provided those parts and and it was kind of a friendship thing too and he told me he goes I make these parts they're really not that nice or that clean but you can clean them up and you can make them fit it's not as user-friendly as other things are but matter of fact I kept his note and here's his note to me right here it says hi Ral I have not cleaned up any of these parts looks like looks to me like you have plenty of skill to do this if any questions just email me and have fun uh, Ross which 
you know, I, I'm always having fun and I always say that. Just have fun. Just enjoy it. And that's one of the things with this one is I was building it. And it was kind of fun fitting the parts, fitting them to the body. Where it started to become a challenge was here's the 71 Duster's chassis. I was fitting that and then fitting the big Hemi engine in there and hitting the inner fender wells and grinding out here for the transmission tunnel. And um, So this one I never really got to finish. And I started this one in 2005 to give you an idea how long ago that was. Now, unfortunately, Ross Gibson did pass away in 2014, and I never really got to finish this one and um, show him when it's finally done. So it, it will eventually get done, and I'm looking forward to getting, getting back to it. But I've got other projects and other stuff that's kind of in the way. I've got some commitments i got to finish first, so that, that one will get back to it, but it's just... You know, just a story of of creating a friendship. You know, like many of you modelers that are in there, so we're we're all just friends, and we all have some common uh, interests that we all really love and share. Which is one of the things why I do this. And and I think some of those first experiences online and on you know the forums and and chat boards, and message boards, and all that stuff, and some of my mom's teachings and everything just really paved the way for for me to do some of this stuff like I, I never thought I would be producing my own channel here and it just goes to show you know just just having fun and, and enjoying it and enjoying all of uh, your guys's comments so I think I've rambled on a little bit much on this particular one and got a little personal but that's what this build represents for me is um, one of my first ones that really took off and really sparked a lot of interest and uh, I, I really enjoyed that and you know it, it wasn't just getting the recognition for it but it was um, the friends that I, I was meeting at the time and, and continue to meet so I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and watching and all your comments I really do appreciate it and hit that bell button if you want to see my latest uploads and everything and uh, you guys you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next Saturday